The next movement is called Brush Knee Push. It's part of Section 6, which includes Brush the Knee and Push, and Half Step, and Play Guitar, or Strum the Lute, or Play Pipa. So, think of a lute, medieval instrument. There. But today we're working on the first part, which is called Brush Knee Push. Now, when we teach this movement, uh, it's often taught with particular martial applications in mind. So this could be a parry, or a trap, or an elbow lock, and then a step. This could be brushing the opponent's knee and pushing them down. And this can, of course, be uh, stabbing, or punching, or sitting, and pushing like that. That's normally how we teach this. It's good as a mnemonic for helping to learn the movements themselves, and the applications can be practiced later as well. However, there is something more fundamental involved with brush knee push, and this uh, is tied into the eight trigrams. Brush knee push is actually not about the knees, well not about brushing the knee, and it's not about the pushing. It is actually all about elbow. Now we could say it's all about the elbows, but really it's about the concept of jo or elbow. It translates as it transliterates as elbow. In most martial arts, there are lots of elbow techniques. These can be strikes or locks or throws, and lots of different ways of using the elbows and uh, from uh, mid-range to close range to grappling and so on. In uh, Tai Chi, the, the word Jo has a different meaning. And this is where we get back to what I've been talking about all along, about the fundamental mechanical principles, the mechanical advantages. So seeing what we think of in Tai Chi as the eight tr trigrams, or Pang Liu Qi An, Zai Lie Zhou Kao. Seeing uh, these not just as martial techniques or tactical concepts, but to see them as fundamental mechanical principles. When we began, we started with the vertical alignment, the Zhongding, the central central principle of Tai Chi, becoming empty and relaxed. Then we talked about the pivoting, looking left, gaze right, as we sometimes say, uh, pivoting around one fulcrum or the other, combining that with the rotation around the central axis to be able to generate power and to improve your balance. Then we got into the actual eight trigrams, the first of which is Pang, which is the connection to the ground. Uh, that's the path of the highest tensile modulus, connecting the opponent's force through your center into the center of the earth in the most efficient and powerful way possible. That's the first part. The other half of Pang is called Liu, or rolling, which is refers to the very low shear modulus, which means that when a person pushes on your center, if they are pushing along that path of highest tensile uh, strength, tensile integrity, then all other directions should be offering as little resistance as possible. Like a log floating in the water, it, it's, it supports the log, but the, it's very easy for the log to roll and very easy for, the, for it to drift. So that's pang and liu, or boing and roll. So strong tensile modulus, very low shear modulus. So if somebody is pushing you, but they're not pushing directly towards your center, then they will follow the path of least resistance and cause you to turn, to change shape and move. So you're, you are very pliant and mobile from side to side, but along that narrow, precise, centripetal geodesic going through the body, that's extremely powerful. And even when you get old, this can still work because it's about relative tensile moduli. So the, your, your tensile modulus is very strong relative to the shear modulus. So as long as you're very loose and relaxed, even if you don't have a very strong tensile modulus, even if you're not as strong as you were when you were really young, you can still deflect a much more powerful force simply because it's relatively easier for them to go anywhere else when they push you. And it's like when a 
Yeah, it's just like something going through the air following the path of least resistance. This is what allows airplanes to turn and maneuver. It's what causes uh, baseballs to curve and so on. So that's Pang and Liu. So that's what we learn when we do grasping the bird's tail, the first part, Pang and Liu. First we learn that tensile modulus, then we learn the low shear modulus, and then we are introduced to the concept of G, which is very precise focused surface area. That means that this centripetal geodesic becomes like a very, very sharp needle that engages a single point with zero surface area, if possible, but as little surface area as you can. That gives you a mechanical advantage over the opponent because you're applying more pressure per square inch because there's less square inch, less surface area. And then we did an, which is about diffusing the opponent's pressure. So it is a an n-dimensional polytope, actually. It's up where Peng, Liu, and Ji are exist in a moment of time. An is actually uh, diffuse over time. So you're spreading the opponent's force out and causing it to uh, weaken over time. So there, that's An. Then we did Lie, which is splitting, which is moving your opponent's force away from your center. This is where we start to deal with angular momentum. So you move, the person is pushing you sideways or trying to turn you. You move their force away from your center, and it reduces their angle. So you reduce the amount of torque that they can apply and increase the amount of distance it takes for them to apply it. So they have, they have less effect, and it takes longer. So you extend, and that allows you to do other things, such as toss them over, because now they're pushing on a weak angle, and it's really easy to throw them. Then we did uh, Zai. So Zai is basically the opposite of Lie. It's or sorry, the counterpart of Lie. So Zai is where you draw your opponent's force away from their center. So instead of them pushing close to their fulcrum, they are now pushing farther away from their fulcrum. It makes it weaker, and it also changes the angle, reduces the angle of their attack. So uh, R sine theta means that they have less torque, less angular momentum. So they can't push you. So that's Zai. And so Lie is the movement we did called single whip single whip and tsai is step up, raise hands, and pull down. Then we introduced kao. We sort of tucked an elbow in there, but mostly white crane spreads wings is about kao. It's about the shoulder. We, tra we translate it as shoulder. As a technique, you can do kao, like that. But Kao is actually the reduction of the length of the force arm. So if a person tries to push your arm around, then you let that, that part of the arm go and you connect to them again closer to your center. And if they push your elbow sideways, then you let the elbow go and you engage with the shoulder and so on, or any part of the body. So Kao is against or abutting. It means you are shortening the needle as it gets chopped off. So if I stab you and you push the needle sideways, you push the needle sideways to try to get it away from your center, then what I do is, as you push the needle sideways, then I just bend, the, I let the needle go, and I push with that. And if you move that, then I get that out of the way, now I'm pushing with that. And if you move that out of the way, now I'm striking with that. And if you move that out of the way, now I'm striking with the elbow. And if you push that out of the way, then I'm striking with the shoulder. So that's Kao, that's the progression from the end to the inside, from the extremities to the inside, in response to the other person trying to chop your needle off. Then we get into uh, Zhou, which is found in Brush Knee Push and Play Guitar. So Brush Knee Push, when we teach it, of course, you, you're parrying the other person's arm, you come down, you push on their knee, you turn, and then you push with a hand, that sort of thing, or you block and then step in and stab him in the face, or such and such a thing. So you'll often see uh, brush knee push demonstrated like this. So you're brushing the opponent's knee, then you're stabbing or punching or, or sitting and pushing. So you have this kind of idea. This is the martial application. But 
as a mechanical principle, as develop, a way of developing the mechanical advantage, what we are actually doing is learning how to apply shear stress to the opponent, to cause, to cause shear strain to them. Uh, and in most martial arts, if you're using an elbow to do this, you're coming in from the side or you're doing a, a hook punch. So this would count as Joe, because the elbow is coming from the side, it's torquing. So I'm applying this torquing power to the opponent, or, or even this, because it's rotating around that hip, so as opposed to pushing straight forward like that. So a hook, an uppercut, an elbow, elbows, up, down, any of these would count as Joe. But as a mechanical principle, play guitar is also Joe, because you're coming back, deflecting this way, striking this way, and squeezing, so you have this pushing this way and that pushing that way, so you're trapping the other person's arm, so the pressure is going this way. You are applying sheer uh, stress to the opponent. So uh, if somebody applies Joe to me, that causes me to do this, or this, or knocks me sideways. And if I can't get out of the way, then theoretically I lose the fight. So in most martial arts, Joe is extremely varied. So striking with the elbow, I should say, is extremely varied. So you can have all kinds of ways of hitting with the elbow. You can come up and pound downwards. You can strike upwards. You can go right out there with the elbow like that. The problem is that from a Tai Chi point of view, it's very easy to fall into the trap of applying sheer stress to the opponent in a way that causes sheer strain to yourself. So you get knocked sideways, you get knocked out of alignment, even if you succeed in knocking the opponent out of alignment. So, so tensile strength like this if you push this way, then it's very easy to resist that. So I try to pull on this. This is a guitar string, by the way. So if I try to pull on this, I can't pull very well. And if I try to squeeze it end to end and it's lined up perfectly, then I, I can't compress it anymore. So this is a very strong tensile modulus. But it can go sideways very easily. So I can, or considerably more easily. So I can knock it side to side like that. So this, if I push like that, that's attacking the person's tensile modulus. But if I go sideways, that's applying shear forces. And that is what play guitar does. And it is what brush knee push does. Where is my robot? OK, I have a feeling that I forgot to push record. Did I? No, I did push record. Good. OK, so here is my robot opponent. So if this is my opponent's arm, then I can knock it to the side with this. So as, the, as they punch me like that, the fist comes toward me. The fist comes toward me like this, and I knock it to the side. That's fairly simple. So that is applying shear stress to the opponent, just going sideways like that. So they have a lot of tensile strength this way, and I simply bring my hand up and I go like that. And that is enough to just take them that far. So I don't have to take them way over there, and that would be a bad thing because now I have lost my ability to engage them. So they come at me with this, I knock this out of the way, but then the other arm hits me in the face. So this arm then becomes a threat. So the punch comes in, I parry it more or less, just lead it to the side. Then they come in toward me, but I still engage with my arm. So I'm still pointing at them, and this is where the actual elbow comes in. So they attack, I lead it to the side, then they come at me with their elbow, I engage with mine, like so. And I might take it down. I might 
trap their elbow against my side, trap their whole arm against my side, and then knock them over that way. So that's applying shear stress to them. That's just the first part of brush the knee. Then I can push if that succeeds. The other arm comes up like this, and often this is seen just like a, a wind up and a push. So ooh, here we go and push. But it's important to remember that we're dealing with the elbows here and we don't want the arm to be out of alignment and I want it to connect to the center. This is where the difference between what we call a Tai Chi Joe and a simple technical application of an elbow technique. Now this is where we often come into the uh, this, this sort of terminology where we talk about the Tai Chi way versus other martial arts. Uh, other martial arts also do it correctly. <laughs> so we could say the most effective way of applying the technique while maintaining a coherent centripetal tensile geodesic. Uh, so all martial arts get to this. Uh, a lot of Tai Chi people don't because they just don't practice to this degree or to this, to this point. It's not of interest to them or they never get the opportunity to train it. But understanding how to apply a sheer stress to the opponent without losing your own pang, your own tensile strength, your own tensile geodesic. So I must always have that needle that we talked about before. Remember, remember the needle in the cotton? Have that needle focused on a single point on the opponent's center at all times, even as I'm applying sheer stress to them. So this is where the catch is with brush knee push and with Joe in general. When you are striking with the elbow, you want to maintain that centripetal geodesic all the time. And this is something, this is one of the reasons why this is not taught to beginners because you may already be so confused or you may have, I may have lost you already. This is why uh, we usually just say, this is a block and brush the knee and then push. And then as we go on, we refine the student's alignment so that they learn that it's not going back and coming forward. It's actually coming up like an elbow strike there. And it's moving forward with power that can be applied to the opponent. And you're preserving that centripetal geodesic with whatever point of contact might engage the opponent's force. So the opponent will always be facing that needle inside the cotton. They will always be facing Pang and Liu. And they will, yeah, as soon as you start to think of el uh, as elbow as a technique and you lose that centripetal engagement, you lose that connection to the ground, then uh, the opponent will get a hold of your center and toss you around. It's a very precarious thing. That's one of the problems with Tai Chi is that in order for it to work, it must be done correctly all the time. Same with any martial art, but these are principles of precision. So you want to refine the movements and practice very slowly so that you get in the habit of always being in the correct position, always having the correct relationship with the mind and the body so that as soon as the opponent connects with you or engages you, you have already won. What a lot of people do is they think of this stuff as a technique or a method that you apply when somebody does something to you, in which case, as soon as they move, it's already too late. So understanding Joe is understanding all of the other seven trigrams, all of the other seven fundamental mechanical advantages. That's why it comes last. So we practice connecting to the ground, not resisting sideways, focusing on a single point of contact, diffusing the opponent's pressure, extending your, the opponent's force away from your center, extending the opponent's force away from their center, and learning how to disengage the extremities as the opponent pushes sideways so that you are always engaging with the end of the needle. So being able to make the needle shorter when necessary. And 
Now, being able to actually apply shear stress to the opponent without losing that centripetal engagement, without letting the technique disrupt all of your advantages. Uh, it's very tempting in a fight to lose yourself in an attempt to win the war, and that cannot be done. Remember, fundamentally, nobody ever wins a fight. So you want to be training in a way that, present, that prevents the fight from actually happening, which means maintaining that central balance all the time, no matter what the other person is trying to do. And they end up defeating themselves. That is the higher level of martial skill. This is not unique to Tai Chi. This is everywhere in martial arts. Uh, there are many different ways of saying it, but that's what it comes to. So that's the, the principle of brush knee push in a nutshell. <laughs> For if you want more details, I'll try to put some more up, but otherwise, if you want to go over it one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I suggest booking a, a private lesson online, if, if you like. And uh, we'll try to get into this uh, in a way that helps you to connect it to all of the other things. So the the look left and gaze right, the uh, six degrees of freedom, how they apply to this, and trying to put all of the eight trigrams together. Then we start putting them all together in a single movement, which is what will come next. But So the next two lessons will be just the movements, brush, knee, push, and uh, half step and play guitar.